One of the big mistakes that a lot of producers make when they get into this business is they think, great, I'm gonna send my tracks out to 20 different non-exclusive libraries. I'm not violating any of their contracts. And I'm just gonna throw my tracks to as many people as I possibly can legally and hope something sticks. The reason why I think that's a mistake, and I don't hear many producers, I probably have any, that actually succeed with that approach, is there's no relationship built with that approach because you're treating them like spam. You're treating them just like yeah. whatever. You know, We'll see, you're just kind of like throwing it out there and seeing what works. So what I think is partnering with exclusive libraries, um, and they're becoming more and more of the norm now anyways, you're probably not gonna find too many non-exclusive libraries out there. And really, you gotta do your research. And I know probably the first question that everybody here is gonna ask is, Give me the name of a library to submit to. That's something I can't do for you guys, and I'll tell you why. I don't know exactly what kind of music you make. I don't know exactly what your goals are. I don't know what kind of content you feel your tracks would be useful for. And I also don't know on the other side what every single library out there is looking for right now and what they're specializing in and what their clients are. It's so much information out there that, I mean, if somebody could put together that active spreadsheet, they would be very, very valuable. Um, but there's just so much to, to keep track of that uh, the best that you can do is you really need to go find, I believe, an exclusive library you research and understand that your music, your your strong, your genre strength, whatever you do really well, has to be useful for them, okay? It's not just about, here's a library and they need music. I'm a producer and I have music. Okay, we're a good fit. Is much more intricate than that. You have to dive a little deeper and think that, well, just because you have hip hop music and they have hip hop music, is your hip hop music as good as what you're hearing in their catalog, right? Is your hip, maybe your hip hop music should be a little different than what they have. Not exactly, because if they have 10,000 hip hop tracks, do you want to be the next 10 out of 10,000 to get lost in that shuffle and just stack the odds against yourself, right? There's a lot of things to think about there. It's not just about that you have music and they need music. Great, I'm serving them. Maybe, and they might accept your tracks, but you might not be doing yourself a favor because you're stacking the odds against yourself. So it, there is a lot of things to think about in terms of that. We can maybe get into those details later, but really doing methodical research on who you're reaching out to and then reaching out to an exclusive library one at a time and saying, I would like to partner with you. Give them a week or two to respond to you. And then if they pass, yeah. okay, that's that's fair. You move on to the next one and give them a shot. But I do not recommend, I got a big, big, big warning here, don't send the same 10 tracks to five different exclusive libraries and just say, well, I'll just see who gets back to me first. Let's role play it out. Let's say all five of them get back to you. Lucky day for you, right? Well, maybe not, because now you gotta basically make enemies with four of them. Because you can only give one, you can only give one of them your exclusive album. So you gotta go tell the other four, sorry, I baited and switched you. I said I had the product, but I really don't, and I lied to you. That you, there's not enough companies in this business to make enemies on day one. That's what I always say. So you should be being, treat people like human beings, you know? And if you really wanna partner with a particular library because you think their placements are really great, you think your music is useful for them and you just have a really good feeling about them, give them a shot, you know, and tell them in your email, I exclusively wanna work with you guys. Like, I really want this to be, not exclusively wanna work with you, but I, I want to give you first dibs on this album exclusively. Let me know if you'd like to do it or not. And then if they don't respond to you in a week, send them one follow-up. Just say, hey, and, and and forward along that original email. Don't make them search through their inbox and say, hey, I sent you guys something last Monday. Here's a link. Just as Mark always says, don't send them attachments, but just a streaming link um, to your album and say, hey, I just noticed you guys didn't reach out to me, didn't respond. Is this something you're interested in? If not, no worries. I wish you guys all the best, but I might be moving on to another library at that point. It's very right. fair. It's very professional. It's very courteous. And even if, this is why you want to do it that way. I've had more than a few of my students get an email from a library four months later. Now, at that point, hey, that's four months. You can do whatever else you want with your, your album, right? They, they had their shot. But the fact that you were so courteous, you were so respectful, and you were you were just such a stand out kind of producer, and hopefully if your, your tracks are really high quality, they can reach out to you. And this happens to some of my students four months later going, I know that album's probably gone now, but we like it and we like you. Can we work with you? And that's right. what you want to have happen. You want to have the, the benefits of your reaching out maybe last four or five months into the future. So um, in my personal experience, yes, usually it's one library that I really give most of my focus to, about 80% of my focus to. I'll usually have a second or a third that once in a while, there could be some opportunities I give to them. And then outside of that inner circle of my focus, there's sometimes, you know, just when you're in this industry, you start to just meet people. And I have people that are in charge of like ad agencies. I have music supervisors. There's just people that, they're not gonna hit me up every month, but like maybe once every six months, once every eight months, they got something maybe for me. And so they're, they're kind of like, oh, 
hovering and floating around my career at all times. But the ones that I have the interpersonal, like week to week, day to day relationships with, yeah, usually it's one, maybe two libraries that I focus on. And I do recommend that for all of you guys because if you're not staying busy with one or two libraries, um, you're not. You're, something's not working right for you. Either the library's not getting enough work for you or they're not asking for enough from you, but you should be plenty busy with one or two libraries if you're cranking out lots of music.